Yes. So my name is Desiree uh, Nzangu, and um, I am Rwandese uh, and Belgian citizen as well. And I was recently on a training in, in Rwanda, Kitabe, um, through IOM for the benefit of the Rwanda Polytechnic and IPRC. So um, I'm actually uh, an engineer by education. So I graduate in Brussels uh, from a bachelor degree in engineering technology and a master's degree in nuclear physics. And uh, since then, I have worked at different functions, mostly um, trainer, curriculum developer for different organizations, mostly around technology, machinery, industrial equipment, and so on. But then lately, for the past five years, six years now, actually almost, I've been diving into entrepreneurship, innovation, and um, I discovered human-centered design or design thinking. Uh, lean, um, and this is what I basically delivered as a training in Rwanda. Um, what I do currently uh, is that I have my own company and I work as consultant for the European Agency for the Space Program. So I would say I'm kind of a, a technology consultant at the moment in the space technology industry. I've been put in touch with the team in uh, in Rwanda, so they've been very um, welcoming and proactive, trying to make me feel already welcome before I was uh, I was there. So that was really warm. Uh, then um, I also have family there. My mom and uh, sister live in Kigali, so it was also an occasion for me to see them. It's been actually a few years since we've seen each other. Um, I think for all the immigrant diaspora uh, out there. They, they will know what I'm talking about. Uh, we can spend years without seeing our parents, our brothers, or sisters, and uh, it's not just a matter of money. It's sometimes that we just get caught up, you know, with day-to-day -day activities and the 25 um, days of vacation a year, these kind of things. So long story short, um, I've been very nicely welcomed when I arrived in Kitabi. I've also had very nice chats. Um, we also the IUM uh, team locally, and uh, Emma and so on. So that was really good to to feel, uh, um, yeah, to feel uh, support and assisted this way. So uh, and I was just looking forward to start doing the training, uh, considering that there was also the confinement in Kigali. There was a, a lockdown like a few days after I arrived. So it was interesting to be in Rwanda during that period and to experience what uh, most people have been experiencing for many months now and to, I would say, escape it by going to the countryside. I wanted to, I've always wanted to contribute. I know it sounds a bit idealistic or cliche, but uh, I mean, the fact is that I have been lucky to get a good experience, I mean, good education in Belgium uh, and at low to no cost. Uh, then obviously I got the degree myself, but I, I mean, I've been lucky to benefit from this. And um, then the job experiences that I acquired over the past uh, 12, 15 years are experiences that I think should be not only valuable for myself and for my colleagues in Europe, but actually first and foremost for countries or regions that maybe do not have access to these high level skills or uh, expertise, um, sophisticated techniques that might be either too costly or maybe not relevant to the local environment. So that being said, also just for my own sake, I felt at some point after a few years working uh, in different countries at different positions, <clears throat> that there was some kind of um, ceiling, um, invisible ceiling, roof ceiling, regardless of how we call it, but it felt like the effort that I'll be putting into delivering uh, work to an employer or a client won't be recognized or valued as much as it should be 
um, while I knew that in parallel there are regions, countries, organizations, and in particular the government of Rwanda or Rwanda as a country that do value very much people with experience, skills, and um, who can come contribute to it for the development of the country and its people because Rwanda has a vision and sees the opportunity uh, that actually my mother shared with me a few months ago about this IOM program uh, where they try to connect the Rwandese diaspora to an organization locally and see how we could develop some kind of training that this time not only will be training people who actually benefit from it, let's say the students, entrepreneurs, but more importantly, the trainers. Because before we'll be training people and then every time the consultant leaves, the knowledge and uh, skills goes away with that person. And there is no continuity or at least not sustainably. Plus the fact that consultants who are not Rwandese or African in general, um, have their expertise, but they might not care as much as I would or have the empathy that makes that we can put ourselves in the shoes of those who will benefit from this training and then will be taking over. So all these different reasons made IUM the right partner for that. Contributing to the sustainable development of the country which in my head means meeting the country's ambition, goals and vision sustainably uh, in a lasting manner, um, but in line with what we've decided we want to meet. They are focused on technology, innovation, entrepreneurship. There are three, four economy, I mean, industries that are very critical for Rwanda, agriculture, uh, health tech, uh, health, uh, healthcare, um, education, obviously, and then also different uh, other sectors. So it's if we want really to have an impact, we need to align to what the, 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 the people have decided themselves is good for them and see how we can actually reinforce it, provide the support so that they can achieve these goals um, as quickly as possible, but also taking as many people as possible on the journey. So um, that's at least how I try to proceed. The, the phase where Rwanda needed to prove that it's capable to do things and deliver is, is past. Now it's more about maintaining that route and bringing more people on the journey. And that's where I think education and the program of IOM bringing in skills from the diaspora is critical. And not only the skills, but if also the diaspora could also start investing in the local entrepreneurs the local organization to contribute to the economy, not just by transferring money as we do through remittance on a monthly basis, but also <clears throat> investing in the local businesses. So this kind of different intervention have, I think, a, a big potential uh, to, to achieve results and particularly in countries like Rwanda with uh, some of the best governance and business friendly environment. Uh, but, and that's good also sometimes to highlight the weaknesses, uh, big challenges on the education um, and the administration side, uh, the research, the research and development and innovation. Um, it's not with money that we can solve these challenges, at least not only with money. So instead of throwing money at problems, let's find a sustainable way to do it. And uh, that's what at least uh, I'm working on through these programs. I would tell them, what do you have to lose? I mean, I when I was in Brussels, I remember having a bunch of friends, uh, Rwandese, uh, Belgium from Rwandese uh, origin, saying that, yeah, they would love to, to contribute during this day. They would love to, 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 to go back home, you know, and to work um, outside cities and, you know, bringing in, doing something. I mean, this was talk that I've heard a lot, but then when I count the number of people who actually jumped uh, and did the move to actually either get a job before going to Rwanda or going to, to Rwanda, getting a job there and trying to, you know, to make a living, to, to contribute, I guess maybe 10% of them, 20 maximum, 
because then we think of okay but then how can i leave my job and then go for salary that will be maybe one tenth of it or uh, family friends a house or something in belgium i don't want to leave this i mean okay i, I get the, the comfort and the, the need for keeping your safety no one is asking to anyone to leave this so what i'll be suggesting them is that take it as a just uh, a leave of absence take three months six months from your job. I know it's possible uh, to take actually leave of absence and go to Kigali, see how you can do something, what you can do, prepare it ahead, look at what are the skills that you can bring in, what are the needs that are locally present, the organizations that are maybe leveraging these, uh, these skills, private, public, because in Rwanda most things are private, public partnership. Then uh, having also some basic and some startup funds only to be rich but don't go empty-handed because it's not gonna work not only for your personal accommodation and expenses but also if you want to start a business or to, to collaborate with some people you will be spending quite some money uh, in the start <clears throat> because yeah people won't be the one paying for it they expect you to come with your initial fund and to to start running things I mean, like what you'll be doing in any country in Europe or in the US, because the Rwanda has the same expectations. And very importantly, Rwanda or Africa in general is not waiting for us, African from diaspora, to go and save them. We've got to understand that. Doesn't matter what's our skills, our experience, they are valuable, but they'll do with or without us. So I would invite anyone instead of wasting their um, skills and experience, um, looking, at, dreaming about making a difference, knowing that it's very unlikely that we will make a difference in the job that we have today or the role that we have in our um, second or first home. Uh, well, there is this small country that has big plan and big ambition and is inviting any African to come and bring a contribution not only financially, but beyond. So yeah, give it a try.